Hello, everybody. You know, have you thought about flying the aircraft in instrument meteorological conditions? That means we're inside of a cloud with no reference to the natural horizon. Now, most of us have come up through our private pilot training VFR in visual meteorological conditions, and we're used to scanning the natural horizon. Now we're in the clouds, we can't see a thing. How are we going to control this airplane? Well, that's our topic today. Welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson, and this is our instrument rating course. To be successful in the course, number one, please be in EPIC's online instrument rating course and study the accompanying material. Number two, watch these videos. And number three, review all of this content one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. So what about this aircraft control? You can see on our graphic right here, it looks like I'm in an airplane and I'm in a climbing left turn. Well, there are two control techniques to control the aircraft. You see those listed here. Number one is called control and performance. Number two is called primary and supporting. So it's a trick question to say, hmm, which one's better, which one's worse, which one do I use? Why is it a trick question? Because the answer is both. Both methods are used in conjunction with one another to produce precise and efficient control inputs from the pilot. So as we talk about aircraft control, let's start with control performance. And on the screen here, you can see that the control performance method utilizes a four-step process. Establish, trim, cross-check, and adjust. Now, when we use the control performance method, we are looking at the instrument flying handbook in chapter six. Notice that chapter six is divided. The first half is for aircraft with the six pack. The second half is for aircraft with the G1000. So it works no matter how your aircraft is instrumented. And at EPIC, you will be using the G1000 half of the chapter. So in chapter six, it talks about control performance. And on the graphic here, you can see this chart and it says, pitch and power settings are known as profiles. Now, the old formula for control performance was pitch plus power equals performance. Now, when we say pitch, what we mean is we're looking at the attitude indicator, which of course gives us both pitch and bank information. And power, of course, we're dealing with the throttles. So we have two control instruments, the attitude indicator and our power instrument, whatever that might be. In a 172 with a fixed pitch propeller, that is the RPM indicator. So Mike, do you mean there's only two control instruments? That's correct. The attitude indicator and RPM. Well, what are the performance instruments? Simple answer. Every other instrument on your panel is a performance instrument. The performance instruments are verifying the control uh, instrument profile. So take a look at the chart. It's the flight profile equals the attitude plus the power setting. So for example, VY, the attitude, 10 degrees of pitch, the power setting, full power. We're talking about a 172S model now. And that is known as a profile. And that is step one, establish. So we go to step two. Now that we've established that with our control instruments, we're going to trim the airplane. Now, notice this excerpt from chapter three of the airplane flying handbook. Attempting to fly the airplane with the trim is a common fault in basic flying technique, even among experienced pilots. The airplane attitude should be established first, 
and help with the appropriate flight control pressures is from properly trimming the aircraft out. So that's trim. Step three is then to cross check or to scan the appropriate instruments, or in other words, to scan the performance instruments to see that my profile is giving me the performance that I want. Now, aircraft profiles are approximations, and they're not always perfect. For example, let's say we pitch for VY, and on any given day, dependent upon a variety of factors, we may actually show a performance of 77 knots rather than the desired 74 knots. Well, what do we do? We go to the next step, step four, and we adjust for any deviation from the desired flight condition. In our example of 77 knots versus 74, we can use small modifications to the pitch, and that's our adjustment, which then requires us to jump back to step two and re-trim the airplane to maintain that attitude to hold that flight profile. That's control performance. Now, control performance works anytime we are changing the aircraft's attitude. Well, what if I've changed the attitude and now I'm in, oh, I don't know, a steady climb, straight and level, a steady turn, a constant uh, descent. I want to maintain that attitude. Here's where we switch over to what we call primary and supporting. This method aids the pilot in determining which instruments pertain the most to any given flight situation. The goal of primary supporting is to inform the pilot of the most appropriate means of correcting any deviations. Now, to determine which instruments will aid us best in maintaining a flight condition, I want you to think back to the previous video, and we talked about basic aircraft control in terms of altitude. That's the instrument to the right. Heading, the instrument down below the attitude indicator. And airspeed, the instrument to the left. So I had altitude, heading, and airspeed. Now, take a look at this table. To determine which instrument will best aid us in maintaining a given flight condition, we're going to break this down into pitch, bank, and power. Start to think about how those are related. Let's say we wanted to maintain straight and level cruise flight. What would be our primary pitch, bank, and power instruments? Well, Let's start with pitch. Which instrument would most directly tell us what adjustment we need to make to our pitch? And if you're thinking, Mike, I think it is the attitude indicator. That is a common misconception. And the reason is because on any given day, depending on performance, density, altitude, weight, weight and balance, etc., it might take one degree of pitch on one day or three degrees of pitch on another. So, an easy way to think about this is this. <clears throat> Ask yourself, what are we trying to maintain in this condition? Hmm, in straight and level, we, we intend to maintain altitude, heading, and airspeed. Okay, therefore, the altimeter is the primary pitch instrument for straight and level flight. Why? Because no other instrument can tell us directly that we are at any particular altitude other than the altimeter. So on our chart, for our cruise condition, under pitch, we fill in altimeter. Okay, what about supporting instruments? 
Well, certainly the attitude indicator, probably the VSI, the airspeed indicator, those would support the pitch information I'm getting from the altimeter. Now, take a look at our chart. What would be our primary bank instrument? Again, ask ourselves, well, what are we trying to maintain? What we are trying to maintain is a specific heading. Therefore, our HSI, our horizontal situation indicator or heading indicator, would be our primary bank instrument. Other instruments can tell us if we're not if we're banking, but they're not going to tell us directly if we're maintaining the desired heading. Now, finally, what about power? Well, again, what are we trying to maintain? Are we trying to maintain a power setting or are we trying to maintain a true airspeed? That's right, we're trying to maintain a true airspeed. So, what's going to be the primary indicator for that? Fill in right here, you got it, the airspeed indicator. The tachometer cannot be primary because although it should get us close to a certain speed, only the airspeed indicator will tell us specifically. So notice how altitude heading and airspeed fill in directly to pitch, bank, and power in the primary and supporting aircraft control method. Remember, primary supporting is to maintain an attitude. Control and performance is when I'm changing to a desired profile. Well, folks, that just about wraps it up. Now, as you go through the rest of these slides, I want you to fill out the rest of this chart one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. All right, folks, join us next time.